it's interesting to identify as a designer maker. We're, we're a rare breed, I say. Um, and Vancouver has many designer makers. Um, this is a, a photograph from a show that I produce annually. It's called Address, and Address is going into its fifth year this year. This is a photo from, I think, two years ago. And so this is a bed and a nightstand that I produced, and then everything else is made by other people who would probably also identify as designer makers. So the artwork is by a local artist, the linens were all done by a local textile guy, the horticulture, the rug was done by a, a local painter as well, um, the light fixture was done by propeller, so we're out there and, and we're a rare breed and, and we rally together once a year for address. <laughs> And um, I find it really interesting working as a designer maker. I, I get a lot of clients and, and the first thing we launch into is what, what are the objectives? What does the client want? What are their needs? And so we spend a lot of time talking about that, about dimensions and wood type and finishes. And it's a, a very important conversation to have. It, uh, obviously, I need to know what I'm doing and what my client wants and so I can deliver. Um, but I also think that there's a, an interesting conversation that's not always happening. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit today, about working with designer makers and how clients can engage with designer makers on maybe a more meaningful level. I think um, we can also take that conversation and flip it around. So when a client is approaching a designer maker, I think it's really important to talk to the designer maker about what their needs are as well. What's their shtick? What is their jam? What gets them up every morning? What, what are they looking for in a job? And so I think it's really important to ask questions like, what's your dream job? Um, and the answer to that question is going to tell you where they shine. And one thing I can say about all of these designer makers that I've run into over the years producing the show is that each and every one is their own very special, unique snowflake. And I think clients can really get uh, more information and, and end up with a better product if they really understand what makes a designer maker tick. Um, I get a lot of, for example, I get a lot of uh, requests for cabinets. I'm not going to lie to you, plywood is not my jam. <laughs> cabinets are not my jam. <laughs> I can do cabinets, I can make boxes and that's great, but it's just not my thing. So when a client comes to me and says, hey, can you make these cabinets? they're really not getting the best part of me. They're really kind of missing out on what I, what I have to offer. My, I call it my glitter. So I want to be able to put glitter on everything. And I, I don't glitter. There's no glitter for plywood boxes. So I think it's really important to have a conversation with designer makers about what makes them tick and what are they looking for and what makes them glitter. Um, I think it's, it um, is a great place to start. Um, before launching into the expectations about the job, really get to know what that designer maker is all about. Um, I'm so glad I asked myself. I'm gonna launch into what makes me tick. <laughs> so my jam is solid wood furniture, really traditionally made. Um, I, I have a love affair with woodwork. I started woodworking when I was 12 years old and I haven't stopped since. So I've been at it a long time and uh, yeah, my jam is solid wood with really traditional joinery. Uh, this is an example of a, a drawer detail. Um, no, it's all it's all done in ash. Yeah, it's all done in ash. And this was a this was a a project figuring out a drawer for me. I I've made hundreds and hundreds of drawers. And I really wanted to just nail it. I really wanted to just figure out what my sweet spot is for a drawer. So through many, many different versions, I landed on this. Uh, it's dovetailed, the joint. And then the drawer front has a handle on it with a seven degree angle, which is the same angle that's used in the drawer, um, in the dovetails for the drawer. So the handle is kind of riffing on the joinery that's in the drawer. So these are the things that keep me up at night. These are the things that I completely obsess about, like the angle on a drawer pull, just is, I agonize over it. And so I think it's really important um, 
for clients who, I think it's really important for clients to understand that, that, that my jam is, is, is furniture and really digging deep into all of those little facets of it. I tend to not work so um, like creatively. <laughs> I have a collection that I work from, so I spent a lot of time and energy really developing little pieces of, or facets of furniture collections. And so when I get a, a dream client, they come to me with an idea for a, a table or a credenza, and then we pull in all of these little facets that I've painstakingly um, figured out. And so this is an example of a knife hinge. Um, it's a really traditional way to open a door. It's just quite simply a little metal pin in a little metal hole, and there's no real moving parts to it. It just rotates in this little pin. And I, I think that there is a time and a place for um, soft close Euro slot or Euro um, pulls and hinges and drawer slides, um, but a real traditional way of uh, putting a hinge on is is with these uh, knife hinges. They're a huge pain in the ass to install, and there's no adjustments. So if the drawer is a little crooked, it's, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> so it's either really right or it's totally wrong. Um, this is uh, an example of uh, the heather bed. This is another collection piece that I have. And I do this in all different versions, different wood types, different leather colors. Um, the back of the headboard is a leather veneer, and that's another um, element that I really like to work with. I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for materials, so I use a lot of solid North American hardwoods. I use a lot of um, leather in my work, leather veneers. So this is a Horween leather on the back, and the drawers are actually lined with leather as well. I just made a really great connection with um, some hunters who hunt elk. And so they've been bringing me these giant frozen hides from up the coast. And I work with a local tannery to get them all tanned. And they're, they're so beautiful. They've got all this kind of crazy coloring and a lot of depth to it. So researching materials, researching joinery, researching hardware, these are, these are all the things where I glitter. These are all the like fun stuff that keeps me up at night. Um, this is a, a feature on a collection called the Sarah Collection. It's, um, it's, it's just cased goods, dresser, uh, nightstand, credenza, and it's got these kind of quirky faceted legs. It's kind of riffing on those um, tapered, round tapered legs. This was quite a, a trial and error. There were a lot of prototypes on this one. <laughs> um, they, I ended up jigging it up so that each one is totally identical to the next. And then there's also a right and a left. So they're identical, but also reversed. It was definitely a process to try to get this leg really kind of nailed. Um, again, here's, here's my, my favorite uh, dovetail drawers. When I first launched my first collection in 2013, I um, kind of did it by accident. It was uh, a happy accident. That's a whole nother story. But it wasn't very purposeful. It was kind of all over the map. And when I relaunched a new collection in 2016, I wanted to make sure that I could, could make things over and over again and that I could make things that made sense for clients, that clients could say, oh, I like that element. I want it in this kind of piece over here. So I really trimmed the fat. I was really like, okay, get rid of all of these things that you're not really interested in. I had some live edge stuff. I don't really do that too much anymore. And, and this drawer was, was a real tricky one. I was a little bit obsessed with really traditional drawers that are done with wood on wood slides, but everybody wanted a soft close. They would open the drawer that was like painstakingly installed with these beautiful wood on wood slides and then they'd be like, oh, it doesn't soft close. <laughs> so I had to figure out a way, I had to kind of reconcile the two. I had to figure out a way to incorporate the soft close uh, hardware that made sense with my traditional kind of roots for craftsmanship. So this, this was a big project for me, just crushing a drawer. Um, this is the Nicole table. She's, she's really fun. She's actually quite popular. She's big and small. Um, I'm working on a rectangle version right now, a four-legged rectangle, which is kind of cool. I like that the collection pieces are 
really, really dialed in um, from a production perspective, but they can also be um, modified in so many different ways. So um, that's kind of that's kind of a jam. Here we go. Here's another little secret drawer. I, I had a client who wanted a bed with some nightstands. I said, well, what do you want in the nightstands? You want a door? You want a drawer? He's like, oh, I want a drawer. He's like, okay, well, what are you going to put in your nightstand? I'm not going to tell you what he put in his nightstand, but he needed a hidden drawer. He needed this little naughty drawer. So we kind of stashed this little drawer behind one big drawer front, and uh, it's, it actually turned out really well. Um, these are kind of, I call these the little icing on the cake moments where I can take a little nugget from the back of my head and pull it out and give it to a client and be like, this is what you need. So I know you want a nightstand with a drawer, but let's give you a naughty drawer. So that was kind of fun. And this is the end. This is the end of my presentation. This is me and a bench. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>